Okay, is anyone dead? No, surprisingly. Greatly, greatly happy with this turn of events. Uh, let's get all of that going down. Once again, get all of that done. Hopefully we can get all of this sorted rather sharpish. And then we will finally be able to uh, finish off this system. Use obsidian there to seal that off. Now, we're going to want gas valves, steel gas valves at that, in each of these locations. One there, one there. We're going to want a little bit of piping, each side, and then gold amalgam gas vents. I'm not going to worry about this part just yet. I, I want to get all of this sorted first. I will need a little bit of extra height to be able to reach the gas vents themselves, but that shouldn't be too hard to do. There we go. Let's get that mopped up as well, please. Awesome. Yeah, then. So far, so good. We are completely chalkers on this side, though, in terms of the uh, regolith moving through. And we're starting to make some progress. There we go. What's the temperature of this stuff? Probably decently low, yeah, it's, it's only 18 degrees, so that is actually still going to be pulling down the temperature in this area. Which is amazing, considering everything else is about 10 degrees hotter. Hi Beck, when are you play, planning on playing Saudi Valley's latest update? Ah, well that's, that's the question, isn't it? Okay, I'm off turkey tray hunt, uh, hunting back when success has been achieved. <laughs> Take care, Lady Shilab. Thanks so much for, for modding tonight's stream. What is a turkey tray? It's uh, a tray that, that's large enough to, to uh, handle a turkey in the oven. Turkeys being very, very large birds. It's kind of like geese. So you typically need, uh, like, most people don't have a tray large enough to handle a turkey. Some do, but usually, usually you don't. So rather than keeping a tray large enough for turkeys, I mean, unless it's, it's a common bird for you to, to have um, for, for dinner, uh, then... Usually, it's a lot easier to get like a disposable tray. Um, for as often as a turkey might be might be eaten, um, it saves a lot of space because you know obviously, if the if the tray is large enough to to handle a turkey, it's going to take an awful lot of room up in your cupboards. In the US, that's a turkey roasting pan. Eh, yeah. Why are you idle? Not enough oxygen down here is the problem. Which is shocking considering how much oxygen we're sending down here. I'm thinking perhaps we need to start bringing down a s another line then. And we can definitely do that to speed up the, the rate at which we can get all of that sorted so let's go ahead and do that then um we'll have the third um, i 
Actually, we won't have that third. We'll go like this instead. The second one can come through. Damn it. The second one can come through. Once again, branch over. And straight on down. And we've got all of this oxygen. Why am I struggling with it? You know? It seems rather silly. Oops, so daisy. Branch it down like so. Branch this one up like this. And we'll bring that up around there, I'm thinking. Which means I want to... Probably break that off around there. We are not going to have this running anymore because it's just, it's not particularly useful for us any uh, at this stage. So we're going to deconstruct that entire section and just branch across there. I think that will be the, the best use. All of that can be broken down now. As well as all of the power going up there. There you go. And I would like that done on a 7 priority, please. All of this should be a 7. Because this is going to greatly help us with uh, the energy requirement. Uh, sorry, the uh, manpower requirement. Because we've just got people just being idle. I mean, right now it's not, but I'm constantly seeing that idle notification show up. Oh, good night, Dewtrop. Have a good trip home. Sincerely clone, I'm having a wonderful evening. Thank you very much for asking. How about yourself? We are slowly getting there. Oh, I really hope no one tries to climb up there, though. So that's just going to cause me so much hassle. Looks like we've got an impact event incoming. Yeah, of course you were. You utter derps. Well, on the plus side, that area is somewhat safe, but now you're stuck. Because you are a fuel. The rest of this should be on seven from now on. There is quite a lot of material being delivered, though, but... Uh, there we go. And now you can leave. Hooray! And... Plomp. Okay. So far, so good. Where's Louis? Oh, there's Louis. Oh, I was sincerely concerned there. I thought we'd lost Louis. Your night is going mediocre because you're having lots of English and French practice. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, how does this game work? Well, this is a it's a colony management game with a very, very strong emphasis on um, engineering. I mean, it's not got a got a particularly accurate physics model, but it's got a lot more accuracy in it than than most games. It tries to model the environment to a, a much higher degree than most games even bother trying. Um, and that makes for a very interesting game where there is a lot of, of uh, a lot of things you can play around with, a lot of things that you can achieve in the game. 
through various uh, various means. Uh, it's a really really fun, really really fun game, in my opinion. Super enjoyable. Right, I think I would just like to replace this. Can I simply replace it though? No. I cannot simply replace it. So we're going to have to deconstruct you. We're going to have to build something there and then replace that. That will keep all of the hydrogen in this room, which will be very nice. But, like, um, the uh, thermodynamics is a very big part of the game. Um, again, as I was mentioning, though, there, there are... Uh, you can create perpetual motion devices in this game, which obviously, you know, is not... a particularly uh, accurate simulation of, of real-world physics, but there are lots of ways that the game does a very good job of trying to, to simulate physics and, and model um, physics. And interactions of gases, liquids, so on and so forth, state changes. Uh, so there's lots of interesting ways you can solve pretty much any problem in the game. And it's, it's one of the biggest things that I enjoy about it. It's hopelessly over-engineering a solution to a problem. Come on now. But at its core, it's a colony management game. You're just trying to uh, keep your peeps happy. That is a lot of mopping you're doing, I've got to be honest. Why? Oh. The liquid is freezing because it's so cold. It, it's hovering hither and yon constantly and let's uh, get that done as a nine so I can then replace this right, that's done and let's break this down now, this won't interrupt the function of these uh, steam turbines, by the way. Uh, they will continue to work quite happily. What will happen is that when they are working, they're not going to put any power onto the main grid. Good morning, CC. Are perpetual motion machines a worthy, a worthwhile energy generator, or are they more of a novelty? Um, hmm. as energy generators, I've not tended to find them particularly useful because you'd need such large scales to generate the p kind of power you need. But for example, this area is completely self-powering. Uh, well, I say self-powering. I bring in water. That's the only thing I, I introduce. I bring water into these electrolyzers. The electrolyzers consume energy to split the water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. The oxygen gets pumped out and used around the base or to cool other things off. But the hydrogen accumulates up here and then gets pumped out by this pump. Now, because of the, the interaction between gases, two gases of different elements can't occupy the same space at the same time. So this has effectively created a lock, a gas lock. Hydrogen being lighter than oxygen will always tend towards the top, and once enough of it accrued up there, no oxygen could ever pass by this little gap to get down here, because this is the, the smallest unit of space possible in the game. Um, so I don't have to have some sort of expensive filtering system. I simply know that as long as I never drain this area completely of any gas pressure, as long as I leave a little bit, then it'll always be hydrogen up here. So whenever this draws gas, it'll always be pulling in hydrogen. So this um, little sensor here prevents this area from, from, ever act from the pump from activating if there's too low of a gas pressure at the ceiling because that's when you're in danger of, of draining all the hydrogen and allowing oxygen through. So uh, only hydrogen is along this line. Now what happens over here is that goes into this tank uh, and creates a, uh, a, a stockpile of hydrogen in here. That hydrogen then gets fed to these hydrogen generators. The generators consume the hydrogen and generate power. They are controlled by a smart battery. When this battery is at 90% of its charge, it shuts down the generators and it won't turn them back on again until it's dropped below 65% of its total capacity of charge. So 
they only burn hydrogen when there's a need for, for more power to be, be injected into the system. This whole system runs energy positive. More power is produced than is consumed by all of these machines. So in effect, it's perpetual motion. It's producing more than goes into it. It's not, it's technically not really because in this case, I'm adding water to the system at all times. Um, but you can actually make, th this is just a very easy example that I've got built in the base at the moment, but you can make ones where there is no further input. Everything that goes in, it, it, it just perpetually generates more and more and more. And then eventually you have to bleed some of it out of the system because it's getting over full of whatever particular resource. Um, but that's, that's a self-powering oxygen maker. Um, there are lots of lots of different things along those lines as well. Um, one particular example is uh, I think natural gas generators, which produce um, as a byproduct of natural gas goes in. This generates power. It produces liquid waste of polluted water. Polluted water could be fed into a fertilizer. Um, generator, which uses the, the polluted water to generate fertilizer um, and produces natural gas as a, as a byproduct and you could feed them back and forth, back and forth. Uh, that system is, is imperfect as well, but there are on a much bigger scale with, with more components within the loop, you can get it to the point where it's an enclosed system that is simply generating materials. But in terms of are they good for energy generation, I would say no. They're more useful in other ways, in my opinion. They're much more useful in, in different um, in different scenarios. Uh, in, in that particular in, uh, example, the self-powered oxygen maker makes oxygen and hydrogen. And it just powers itself, so it's a closed-loop energy-wise, which is quite nice. Um, but it's really, I, I would really build some one of those devices to try and produce power. I think more effort would go into trying to generate the power than you would possibly get out power. Um, so. There we go, now we can break this down. And finally, I need to cross this wire, connect that up again, and then replace the... Oh, dear. Well, actually, we don't need this to be steel. We, this one can happily be copper. A copper steam generator right there. But uh, another way that the game does have uh, very broken physics is actually the duplicants themselves, or the duplicants, rather. Um, they're very derpy, though. Uh, for example, you can give them a diet that includes no water. Um, one example of that is meal lice. No water enters this process. A little bit of dirt goes into it. So dirt gets added to the mealwood. Mealwood eventually produces meal lice. They can just eat the meal lice. If you don't give them any, if, if you don't process the meal lice any further, no water is used in, in, in the process of, of making that food. They eat the food, they eventually go to the toilet, they use five kilos of water to flush the toilet, but the toilet produces 15 kilos of polluted water. So five kilos of liquid goes into the toilet for the flush, the duplicant is weeing or otherwise excreting 10 kilos of additional water. That polluted water goes through a sieve, um, which takes the polluted water, outputs clean water, and that just goes back through. Eventually, you've got you've got a water positive process uh, in in amongst that. Um, 
The water sieve produces polluted dirt as a byproduct of filtering that water. That can be put into a compost heap to produce more dirt, to make more meal lice, so on and so forth. Again, it's not a perfect system, but uh, it is a very... Uh, <laughs> it is very much a you know, raised eyebrow system. It's like, hmm... Should that be quite as efficient as it is? Right, we want this down to 50 grams, and we want that down to 50 grams really, really fast, because right now we're just venting massive amounts of gas needlessly. Hopefully someone can come along and uh, switch that over. That one's set to 50. This one's set to 50. That one's set to 50. Good, good, good. That one is now set to 50 correctly. Let's seal that off. There we go. And that can go away. Sandstone can be placed there. We are slowly but surely getting to the point now. Actually, we'll pop all of that up to, uh, to an 8. Very, very quickly getting to the point now where all of this is going to be uh, ready for the robo-miners. And the next step after that... I guess this is all looking at rockets. Realistically, but yeah, the the one of the things with the game is oxygen not included. In order to to model a lot of the stuff that it it models, it needs to take shortcuts. And those shortcuts introduce basically weaknesses in the, the logic of the game. But by and large, the game... It's the rule of fun, really. Um, the, the physics system, it doesn't completely take a backseat to fun. But there are some things which are just... You know, it's, it's just fun. It, it's, you know, you don't think about it too hard sort of thing. Um, like most of the animals... Like the fact that a hatch can literally eat anything and poops coal. Or um, the the Dracos, they eat meal lice and produce um, and, and produce reed fiber scale, uh, scales. Or in the case of glossy Dracos, they produce plastic. So on and so forth and so on and so forth. In fact, with, with the Dracos, they are a completely broken system. Uh, probably the most broken critter system in the game. Simply because a Draco eats a growing plant. They don't eat the byproduct of a plant. Uh, sorry, the fruit of the plant. They eat the plant itself. Now, with meal lice, you have to put a fertilizer in meal lice, and that is dirt. You add dirt, makes the meal lice grow. Draco eats that. You know, So you're constantly adding dirt to the system. However, balm lilies grow in, an, in a chlorine-rich environment. They don't consume the chlorine, they just require the environment to have chlorine in it for them to grow. A Draco will eat a percentage of a balm lily. However, there is no other fertilizer. You simply need the, the right atmosphere. You don't need to maintain it, you don't need to do anything else to it. Once you've got that atmosphere, the balm lily can start growing in it. And as long as it doesn't change, then the balm lily will just keep growing. You can uh, the Draco will eat that, so nothing is being input into the Balm Lily, but the Balm Lily is gaining mass. Eventually, the Draco eats some of that. Eventually, you shear the Draco. You're now generating new mass in the form of reed fiber or plastic scales. But not just that. You can eventually butcher the Draco. So you've now ju just generated meat out of that process. The Draco probably laid an egg, though, before you butchered it, so now... There's a new Draco, and it's just going to eat the same balm lily plant, which will never, ever die. It'll just keep growing infinitely without any new investment of resources. You are generating meat and, and scales, whatever those scales may be, plastic or fiber, infinitely for no further input of resources. There is just an initial investment, and beyond that, eh, you're, you're golden. So they are a very, they, they, they are a truly broken system. They're probably the only, you know, literally no holes barred, this is a broken system in the game.
Everything else requires some degree of of uh, input from you to get working. Really need these to be done quickly, though. Because right now we've just shut down quite a lot of the oxygen to all of our things. Most sadly. Yep, our base has been without oxygen for a while. Hmm. Well, that's rough. Everyone's going to be idle in there because they haven't got anything uh, anywhere to go. Uh, an oily asteroid, methane, carbon dioxide, crude oil, and petroleum. Come on then, peeps. In fact, I'm going to have to bump that up to a nine, aren't I? That was a bit silly of me. Come on. Put back on a seven. I wasn't expecting that to take so long for them to do. Sadly. I should have, but I didn't. There's another such system, the geysers. Well, the geysers are kind of explained away. Um, but yeah, the, the whole Barm Lily Draco cycle is, is utterly broken. Come on, peeps. Need that finished before we run out of oxygen to refill the suits, otherwise you're not getting back out again. Oh dear. Okay, I guess it's going to have to go on to yellow alert then. Come on. That's right. Let's get all of this done as quickly as you possibly can, please, and indeed, thank you. And boom, there we go. Right, gases should now be flowing correctly. Got two lines of oxygen going down here. This one needs to be broken. And then rebuilt, sadly. Uh, I'm going to have to have this move across there, move up. And once again, gonna have to. Oop, no, gonna have to pop that onto a yellow alert. Just make sure it gets done. That one is special because that one actually provides the uh, oxygen for the rest of the base. Um, which is a bit of a potch, really. There we go. Now this will start splitting between the two, but it will eventually completely fill the base. Thankfully, the base is highly oxygenated. I mean, it's starting to get a little bit lower on this side, but for the most part, it was it was quite a um, quite a sufficient system. But this will greatly improve it now. Oh, yeah. Okay, crisis averted. Oh, we'll take some bristle batteries, sure. How is work coming over here? Eh, it's not really. But then I'm not too surprised because I keep giving them many, many other higher priority jobs. So is there any waste in the system? Uh, that is in process or recycled somehow. Uh, in which system in particular? You're talking about the Draco one? Um, I imagine there is. Uh, in regards to... Like, in general, there's quite a lot of, of byproducts, things that you don't particularly intend to use or have any immediate use for that uh, you will typically regard as, uh, as waste. Uh, heat is probably one of the biggest ones. Uh, in most cases, heat is is an enemy uh, that you're, you're trying to constantly work around rather than uh, something useful to you. Let's get that built as well. 
since these are currently completely cut off. Um, there are there are some things that heat is the the biggest byproduct that I generally have to try and manage. Um, that's what the steam generators are for. I'm not building steam generators to generate energy out of heat. I'm building steam generators because they will take the heat, they will siphon off a lot of that energy, and they will return to me slightly less than boiling water instead. So effectively destroying heat. Um, because that energy will then be used up in, in some process somewhere. Um, I build them more to get rid of heat than, than to actually uh, use it. Alright, okay. For now, though, we've got another battle to get. 